It's Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. It's the Andy Snowden Radio Show. Show. It's the Andy Snowden Radio Show. This is Canon FM. Boxing Day. It's the Andy Snowden Radio Show. Show. Merry Christmas. Good morning, Andy, and all your listeners. Canon FM. This is Richie Malone here from Status Quo, and I'd just like to give a big shout out to all the people in the music industry that have um, have had probably the hardest year of their whole career this year. Um, all the guys that put these tours together, the people you never read or hear about, um, the technicians, the roadies, uh, the management teams, the PR people, everybody that work their backsides off to put on these big tours for uh, for everybody to see. So, yeah, listen, Merry Christmas, and we hope you have a good Christmas, and let's hope for a happier New Year. Take care, all. Over and out. Bye bye. The awesome. Never gets old, does it? Come on, Eileen. Come on. Dexy's Midnight Runners. Absolutely superb. Absolutely love that idea. So this is the Boxing Day Unsung. Hang on. I'll just put a bed on. Just to make it a little bit more funky. This is the Boxing Day Unsung Heroes special with me, Andy Snowden, celebrating our unsung heroes from around the region. And you're more than welcome to it. And now is our time for our special guest of the day. It is John Rhino Edwards of uh, of Status Quo. And John Rhino Edwards is an English musician, best known perhaps uh, for being, as I say, the bass player uh, with the rock band Status Quo. And John has played with many of the greats, including Peter Green, ex Fleetwood Mac, of course, a brilliant, in my opinion, Climax Blues Band, Judy Zook, and the Dexies Midnight Runners. Before joining uh, the Reform Status Quo back in 1986, incredible. John also plays with his own band, Rhino's Revenge, and has released the brilliant track, Super Smashing Great, for the Stagehand COVID-19 Crew Relief Fund. In a moment, I'm going uh, to play that track, but first, first, girls and boys, I am thrilled to bits to say that I am joined on the line now by John Rhino Edwards of Status Quo. John, well, Merry, Merry Christmas, my friend. You'll be Andy then. <laughs> Hello. Hi mate, how are you? It's lovely to speak to you. Thanks ever so much for doing this. Oh, that's all right. You're Andy, yeah? I am indeed, yes. Andy Snow. You're not Irish. Pardon? You're not Irish. I'm not Irish, I'm Welsh. Ah, yeah. Okay, though, because I know Richie said he's been speaking to you, so I figured it was that you were an Irish station. All oh, right, no, yeah, North Wales, uh, Wrexham in North Wales, we are. Oh, do you know, it's one of the few places I've never been to. Oh well. Wrexham. Like, well, no, I used to. Um, I, I'm, I support my, my football team. Used to play Wrexham all the time. Yeah. When they when they were in the league, and it was always it was always quite a good game. What are you Brentford? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because, I mean, you're a season ticket holder, aren't you, for Brentford? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm keen. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite ill. <laughs> yeah. Have you had a no, season? I've had a season ticket. Oh, oh, About nine years now. I used to have one, but I let it slip when we were touring a lot. And then in the last few years, I thought, bugger it. And it's, I mean, one thing, I only got to see about eight games, but, you know... Brentford is the best. It's well, everyone says their club's the best, but it's a great club for the fans. Yeah. I, oh, whilst whilst I'm an OAP, I used to stand behind the goal, and it was a tenner, and it's a tenner a game on a season ticket. Right. You know, whilst, with all the idiots as well. You know, so what's not to like about? Yeah. You know what, Andy? Everyone needs something in their life where they lose themselves. Yeah, absolutely. However long it's for, you know, if it's for two hours, it's for two days. I don't mean permanent vacation, but, um, you know, and I, and I went to the game last week. Oh, really? Yeah, I got that because of the season ticket holders, when, the, when, when they could have people in the world tier four now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went, to, I went to watch the game, and, 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 you know, you can watch it on the telly, but you can't see what's going on off the ball, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm oh, finding it... Oh. I'm finding, it, I'm finding it difficult to get into it on the t- on the telly with no crowd. It's weird. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I've got um, yeah, we've got a good game coming up. Though you know, we, we, we're we're in the quarterfinals of the, um, the the league cup, and we could play Newcastle next week. So that'll be a test of how good we have, how far we've come. Gosh. 
Well, we've, uh, in Rex, and we've just been bought by two Hollywood I stars. I know you have. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get it's much a, It's a wacky one, but I think, hey, you know, not, as long as we can with it, and it's not just a sort of, you know, oh, let's do this, and then after seven minutes, oh, I'm bored, you know. Yeah. If they stick with it, I think that's a fantastic thing to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could be the making of us, or it could be, uh, as you say, it could be, uh, you know, they, they might be doing it as a hobby. Yeah. You've had a couple of famous players come out there, haven't you? We've had over the years, uh, yeah. Mickey Thomas, yeah, Mickey Thomas. And you had there was a striker with Stephen Rex and Chris somebody. Chris, um, uh, Pete, not Pierce. Um, oh, what's he called? He was a he was a mixed race guy. Yeah, he was in school with my wife. Yeah, and then he went on to, to quite a big club. Yeah, Chris Armstrong. Armstrong, yeah, so, uh, Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember seeing him at Brentford when we beat you five one. <laughs> had to get that in but um it's the race course ground right that's right yeah yeah, we yeah I've, I've, I've never ever been to Wrexham the nearest I've been to you oh I suppose I'd say Mount Snowden yeah you know Lam- Landau no Lambaris I've yeah. been you know I've spent quite a lot of time around there I love to walk up the slope how far is that from you Um, it's about whew, about an hour yeah oh it's a lovely it's a nice part of the world it is lovely well, it is when you're not locked down. What do you think of that geezer? Do you think he's a tosser? Yeah. <laughs> the ghoul. I call him the ghoul. <laughs> you know, I could see him emerging from a grave after, you know, after having sort of t- t- stolen all the, all, the, all the riches in there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's been the maddest of years and, um, and he's just sort of topped it off nicely. Mind yes, you. I mean, it, it, it just, you know, it's like, it, it's like if he was going to say, it's a fantastic day, and we're getting, and we're getting, and we're going to get rid of you know all the tears and all that. You'd still think he was going to tell you somebody had died. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we called him, we called him either the, me and my missus called him either the Undertaker or the Ghoul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I don't know. I, I think some of it. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, you're you're in lockdown, right? Yeah. Now, how strict is that? Um, I'm not sure, you know, because the last time it happened, the first one was the big one, the first one, that that was everybody was staying indoors and there was no planes or anything. Um, Then the second one, they they seem to just say you can't go shopping unless it's really necessary. And then the third one, my wife's just been Christmas shopping today and she said, well, you wouldn't know anything that was wrong. Oh, so... so non-essential retail is open. Non- yeah, you can buy anything now. Yeah. Yeah. See, we haven't got that here. No. You know, we're we're, we're weird. I mean, we might. You know, I don't know why. It's just saying. Look, I'm sh- I'm locking down the southeast. You know. Yeah. But yeah, we're, we've been in our. Um, when you when you spoke to me today, we we've actually got a place down on the coast, and um, we were there on Saturday when Boris did. We were going to go there for Christmas, but we, we were down there on Saturday taking some stuff down ready for Christmas. Where Boris told us that uh, did he did his his his, his spiel yeah. and when, the, when we thought oh, fuck it we've had two days down there and I, and the, the, the mate of ours we were going to spend Christmas with and his missus came over and said what are you doing Christmas day he said we're going to go walk, walk along the beach then I've got three pubs lined up before lunch I'm going to have a pint in three pubs before lunch and he said what they're doing a substantial meal um the substantial meal in the in the first pub he's telling is a plate of cheese for two pound fifty <laughs> You know, my, my local pub was doing chilli for a quid, I think. Brilliant. You know, it's a substantial move. I mean, you know. Yeah. Did, did you know, by the way, sales of Scotch eggs have gone up by ten, gone up tenfold. <laughs> Doesn't surprise since the, since the geezer said it's a substantial meal. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Anyway, what do you want to talk about? Well, but yes, well, I, was, I wasn't going to talk to you about that, but, um, but uh, yeah, well... Scotch eggs. Let's Scotch talk eggs. about Scotch eggs. We yeah. talk yeah, about Scotch on. eggs a bit later on, but uh, obviously we'll have yeah. a chat about your... Uh, your uh, your charity single that you've put out, Super Smashing Great, it does uh, oh yeah yeah does exactly what it says on the tin. We'll talk about that in depth in a moment, but um, yeah, I mean, I was gonna I was gonna ask you about how you've coped in 2020. Just kick off with, I mean, it, it's been an extraordinary year. You, you're for the last 30 years, you'd have been on tour at this point. So um, have you been twiddling your thumbs and pulling your hair out? Um, 
It's the last 41 years, actually, because I, I did two. I was in other bands before Quo. Oh, right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, my, they didn't plug in my life support system. Um, <laughs> however, I was, it's funny, isn't it? I always knew, I, I, I just always knew that I would end up doing really well. I, it's, you know, I've always believed that I would do that and that I would win £247,000 in the lottery. And I'm still waiting for that. Yeah. But one out of two is not bad. <laughs> no, I always knew I'd be in a great band, uh, you know, a great band and a big band. I just had the, I, you know, I, I bumped into somebody who used to roadie for me when I was a semi-pro. And I hadn't seen him for years. And he, and he said, uh, we all knew if anyone was ever going to make it out of our band, it was going to be you. Because you were just so much more, you were much so much more into it for everyone else. You weren't just into it for getting pissed and shagging, you know. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah, very, very driven, I'd say I was. Yeah. Like Francis is, you know. I mean, well, everybody in this band, you've got to be really driven to be successful. You can't, you can't be the best guitar player in your own bedroom, you know. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah, exactly. You know, so... But anyway, I can't think what was joining on. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It's. I mean, I, funny. I, I, um, I, I, I miss it. Of course, I do. I mean, you know, I, I, I love. I'm really, I'm really good at touring. As in, I'm really good at filling my head while I'm on tour, and not, and not just sitting in a gig all day. You know, or watching, or you know what I mean, just yeah. sitting in a gig doing fuck all. Oh, I can't, I can't swear, can I? <laughs> yeah, it, it would help me if you didn't. <laughs> sit, yeah, sit, sit, yeah sit, but you know, so I mean, it, 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 it's each to their own. Yeah. You know, I mean, what gets Francis, what gets Francis ready for his gig is him being at the gig all day. You know, as we we will always arrive at the gig at some time in the night, which is a great idea. We travel over, we travel overnight all the time, and. Um, you know, it's, it's whatever gets him through. You know, he'll get there and he's got his routine that I go through. And my routine is to get there and get out as quick as I can. <laughs> and oh, I'm just, what I'll, what I'll do, what, what I mean, I'm, I'm a good tourist, is that I, I go out, I'll go out every day. Because that's how, that's my, my routine for the gig, it involves getting out on my own or, with, or unless somebody else is interested in what I want to do. And I'll and I'll I've already scoped it out, you know. I'll check out what museums are around, what art galleries, you know. It's pe preferably one that involves walking to them or getting on the tram, especially in Germany. I love trams. But I'll go out, film me out for a few hours, bit of local cuisine, come back, ready for sound check, bosh, end of, as they say, as us cockneys say, bosh, end of. <laughs> But anyway, remember, you you yeah. asked me something else. Sorry, I just wanted to finish that. No, that's okay. No, that's, I, remember. I am missing that side. I'm missing it. Of course, I'm. And I miss the and I miss the people. We, we, you know, we're all sort of grown men. And I, I actually put it out there on our WhatsApp group the other night. You know, I really miss you. Know, I really miss you all. And I immediately, everyone came back and said, "We don't fucking miss you." <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> everyone, everyone, Everyone else came back and said, "Oh, you know, we all, you know, we miss you. I miss you, miss you." And Francis said, um, "He said, I even, he said, I even miss your clumping down the bus at four o'clock in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, that's uh, anyway. You asked me something else. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I, I was just uh, alluding to the the, the oh. fact that I mean, obviously, we know you're a status quo as bass player. You have been for the past. What thirty-five years now? But you, you, it all it all kicked off as a child, a child prodigy, really, on the violin. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. In the classical. No, no. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's. A, it, it, I don't I mean. I don't, you know, it's like how long you got. Everyone's favourite subject is themselves. But um, I, I was, I was a very troubled child, very troubled. Um, but my mum always says at the age of two. I would sit there by the record player and I would just point to the ones I wanted to I wanted to listen to, whether it was Doris Day or, or Ken McIntosh's orchestra or Al McCogan. And I knew exactly what the record was and, and I, I would always point to the one I wanted to play and she said I would just sit there for hours, play me a record. So it was, it was obvious that I was into music and um, I went to, um, the, when I was seven, I started in the violin classes at school and we were... Oh God! Funny enough, I get my violin out a minute. We were we were really quite skint when I was young, and um, the violin, we didn't have a phone. And the violin teacher actually walked round to our house, the woman who taught me at school, and she said to my mum and dad, "You've got to, your son's got to have private lessons. He's really really talented." Um, so it shows what she knew. But um, 
<laughs> yeah, you know, how, 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 can you, how can you be so wrong? No, but anyway, I did that, and um, at the age of 11, I got a scholarship to London College of Music, a junior scholarship, but um, the damage was already done by then, I think. I'd heard the, I'd heard, um, the Beatles. I'd heard, I heard Love Me Do by the Beatles, and it was a complete epiphany. This is what I want to do. You know, in the next day, right, or in about 1965, right to the Beatles fan club, you know. Yeah. Because, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only, I'm 11, but I'm really good at the, at the at the at the acoustic guitar. Can I please join your band? Can I please join the Beatles? I want to be the fifth Beatle. Yeah. And I really did, you know. And um, but they, they the Beatles get you got me into so many other kinds of music. It's like on the, the first album I bought, the first track was Roll Over Beethoven, and and I'd never heard it, and I thought, who's this Berry bloke? You know, and I just, when I, I went in and found it, it was asked a couple of older people, so that's Chuck Berry. Got me straight into Chuck Berry. It got me into Buddy Holly, Everly Brothers. I mean, the Beatles, the early Beatles, complete Everly Brothers. Like the Stones is um, Bo Diddley. Well, I, t I just discovered it, the amount of famous songs that guy wrote. I never, I'm really late to the party with him. I love it to bits. I was playing the track the other day, and my, my wife said, um, I said, bloody hell, you know, doesn't that sound like the, the early Stones? She said, you what you mean that's not the Stones? I said, I thought that was the Rolling Stones. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complete rip-off of Bo Diddley. Not in a bad way, you know, it's an, paying homage to him. But um, anyway, yes, I was really good, but by the time I went to music college, I'd lost interest because I'd heard the Beatles. So when, I mean, when it came to, I, when I, st I stopped doing that when I was 14 and I've never looked back and I've never, I've hardly ever played a violin. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Because the violin isn't the easiest thing to play either, is it? I mean, well, no. Well, can you imagine what it must have been like in my house? With, you know, with me practicing violin, which I hated for two hours a day. <laughs> you know, I think it must have driven my mum mad. Uh, but I, I, used to, I used to play in another band. Actually, I did. I did play. Um, we used to do an Irish thing. All right. In another band, and I just, if you know, if we, if we'd gone down well, but we were a frog band, so we normally died on our ass. But. Um, if we ever went down well, we did this thing we used to call it the Irish Flunky, and it's, I think it's not the Rex of Mallow. I know you'd know this song if you heard it. Right. Anyway, um, there was someone, I was going to try it on something else. Oh, oh yes, cool. Epiphany. <laughs> I had this, my second Epiphany was when I went to see Free on November the 7th, 1969. I just, I, I, I'd been chucked out of a band, funnily enough, for playing violin and guitar because I was crap. And, um, mind you, they weren't very good either. Um, I, I got an, an album, I bought an album put by Island Records called You Can Always Go On In and it had a track by this band called Free on it called I'm A Mover. I thought, well, that's free, I quite like that. You know, and they, they, you know the samplers in that, I, you, you're, you're younger than me, I can tell, but they, the record labels used to, especially the smaller labels, used to put out sampler albums where each of their bands would have one track. Right. And, and it would be and it would be a cut price thing. They've obviously done a royalty deal. And I mean, on this album, there was it was just Hotel, King Crimson, Fairport Convention, Free, Traffic. You know, I mean, Island Records signed some out, amazing acts. Anyway, you, um, yeah, this track was on, and I saw they were playing at Richmond, Richmond Athletic Ground, and I went along, and it, it just blew my it just blew me away. Unbelievably, he's still my favourite bass player. I just walked out of there on air. But like, I have found it. I know what I want to do now. Yeah. You know, I want to be a drummer. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was, uh, I just watched him and thought, that's it. And, and then I, um, I borrowed a bass and the first time I played it, I got a gig with a band called Maniac Mouse. I won't bore you with this much longer, but it, it's hilarious. They were all older than me and a lot better. But I soon got up to speed with them, you know. In fact, I'm going to bore you for two minutes, but... Um, they used to treat me like shit. You know, I was 17, they were about 35. And I, I was never allowed to sit in the front of the van or anything like that. Right. But they had, they had gigs and I got paid, you know. They were actually nice people. Yeah. You know, it was all a bit a bit of front. But, um, and, then, and then after about a month, I realised it was really bad. But it was great fun. And um, we were playing in Plymouth in 1997. And I got an email from a guy. So I was standing there at Plymouth Avenue last night to, last night and I thought I know that bass player I know him he said I couldn't make it out who it was and then he said it suddenly clicked you were John you were the bass player in this band Maniac Mouse and he and he said we. he said I'm so thrilled for you he said we all knew after a few weeks that you were a lot better than us and I you know but it was just it was such a nice thing you know yeah, yeah and I mean, it wasn't even an ego massage it was just really you know it was really nice that he'd been uh, 
you're taking the trouble to write to me if you like Brilliant. yeah anyway yeah, yeah so it, how's lockdown been is that what you were going to say <laughs> Well, before Quo, of course, you played with uh, probably, possibly the most iconic band of the 80s, Dexys Midnight Runners. And how, did, how did that come about? Oh, God, you, I'll tell you what, you, you're making a run for your own back here, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, OK, I was, um, I, I'd made a single, it wasn't very good, but, I, but I, I was, the band, I was with Judy Zook at the time. I phoned up and said, can I come and play you this song? I want you to A&R it for me, you know, see what you think. And this girl said, yeah, no problem. So I, I went off down to the tube. I didn't do it well in my crimson bomber jacket, as she did in those days. And um, I suddenly realised that I'd forgotten the tape. So, dickhead, you know, so I ran back to get it. And as I ran back, the phone was ringing. And I thought, oh, shit, should I answer it? I'm going to be late. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll answer it. And, uh, and he said, oh, no, John, it's Steve Torch here, who was, um, the guy, he wrote, um, Do You Believe in Laughter to Love? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, and he knew Kevin, and he said, Kevin just rang me up and said, would well, I like to join Dexys with Night Runners? And I said, no, I'm not good enough, but I know someone that is. And he said, if you want, if you're interested, they're at Good Earth Studios. So, go, so you know, get yourself down there. So I phoned up and said, I believe Steve's right here. He said, yeah, come down, come say hello. And, um... I, got, I get down there and they're like, well, where's your base? Well, what do you mean? I thought you just wanted to have, have a chat, you know, and if you like me, you know, we'll carry on. And no, we need someone now. <laughs> and so I, so they, they found a base for me. And uh, do you play? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I play the guitar. I don't, I don't play the bass. Right, well, I, I tuned up using harmonics. Right, yeah. And, the, and uh, they were like, Who's it? this geezer must be good. What the fuck's he doing? <laughs> You know, because they all, they all use tuners, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. ding, 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 you know. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the guitar player was talk about he's one of the luckiest men in showbiz. <laughs> I mean, we did, we did a rock palace in Berlin one time and he broke five strings in one song. I mean, it was a black belt karate and that's how he played, the, he played his guitar. And every, every, the, Kevin, he did, whatever Kevin said, oh yeah, Kevin, yeah, yeah. No, no, Kevin, no, yeah, you're right. No, it's not got the right vibe. But anyway, um, I got the gig. And, and oh, I, I put in a couple of licks as well because I, I was playing a song called "Let's Make This Precious," I think. Yeah. And um, I, I did a couple, a couple of other songs, and um, I put in a couple of bits. And I thought, if you, you want to see if I'm any good, and these things. What did you do these bits for? I said, "What's the sort of?" He said, "Don't." <laughs> 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 you know, we play, we play the, we play the parts here. Oh, okay, fine. And then I got I met the manager, and. Um, they, they, they were expanding the lineup at the time, but they just sacked the bass player. Right. Um, and so uh, basically, I got the gig. Next day, next day, I get a, pho- a phone call, ten o'clock in the morning. Um, do you want to do TV today? Yeah, great, love to. Where is it? It's at BBC. What is it? Oh, it's a new program. You won't have heard of it. It's called The Young Ones. Wow. And uh, so I'm, I'm, and I watched some rehearsals of The Young Ones, and it was like, what the bleep <laughs> is this? <laughs> You know, it was like it was just like anarchy. You know, I mean, it was just brilliant. So I was there. So that was the, like the first series of the young ones before. Yeah, the first ser- first series. Yeah. So nobody. I, yeah, think I, mean... it's called, I think it's called Bomb. The one I'm on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it. You see, I remember. I remember the uh, Dexys being on that. Q Q Dex is with my mother's in the bathroom. That's right. We did, yeah, we did Jackie Wilson said. Yes. But it was always oh, kind of. I do. I, I, I literally try. I try. Uh, with varying degrees of success to, re- to re- remember my whole career but it's, I really do because it's been an absolute blast brilliant you know, mean, and, uh, oh yeah I've, done, I've had so many amazing I've been the luck uh, you make your own luck but I, I, I you know I've made the best of it yeah anyway I'm a, I'm a big headed bastard as well oh, I'm, big, <laughs> I'm a bloke I'm a big headed bloke as well <laughs> Anyway, um, how's lockdown been? Right, okay. Um, <laughs> fast forward a bit. Let's fast forward a little bit because you were playing with the brilliant, in my opinion, the Climax Blues Band with oh, uh, yeah, yeah. with Jeff Rich. With Jeff. Was, was yeah. you, uh, and uh, anybody that doesn't know Jeff, he, he, he became the Quo member, the second Quo member with well, you. Was that was that the first well, time we, you we, met we, him? We, well, we, we, we played together. I saw Jeff Rich playing when I was playing a gig with a guy called Screaming Not Such. Right. Which was, which was the funniest gig I've ever done. He said, yeah, check this out. He says, um, he's, uh, I, I just got the, uh, it was a one-off gig. My mate, but Charlie Morgan was playing the drums and the, and the bass player couldn't make it. The guitar player was a complete alky. He would spend the whole gig 
dropped up against the stack, clinking the bottle of brandy. Fuck off, player, though. But he was just pissed with this, but still did it. Anyway, have you heard of Screaming Lord Such? Yep. When he walks in, it's a Dave. Oh, Dave, his name is Dave. So I said, hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. You're John, yeah. I said, yeah. Um, he said, oh, all right, we need a rehearsal. He said, this is not right. He, this is, and I quote, it says, right, this, this is, there's a song called Jack the Ripper. It's got a funny bit in it. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. Yeah, there's got a funny bit in it. I mean, I've never even heard the song. I mean, I spent the whole. We were supposed to scream with all touch of the savages. This mild man of bloke suddenly, right, and don't see him again. He comes out. He comes out wearing a, a leopard skin with a club and a coffin. And I just said, "What the fuck? What the heck? what?" I said, "What the heck is going on here?" <laughs> and it was just the funniest thing. I mean, I could. It was. I mean, it was awful. You know, I was just watching the guitar players because he was so pissed, his hands were all over the shop. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what's someone pissed playing the guitar? It's just like, there's like a muppet almost. <laughs> but um, I've got there, there was, but anyway, Jeff was in the house band and he just joined. He just left a band called Stretch and he was in the, he was in the house band. And I remember thinking, he's really good, that guy. And um, when Judy Zook was, we were advertising a drum, I got the gig because I remembered the guitar player's phone number. It was, it was Mike Paxman. All right. Have you heard of Mike Paxman? I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's produced some crow stuff. He's, 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 he's a phenomenally talented guitar player, I tell you. He, but he gave up, he didn't like touring, but he's such a such a player. Anyway, we were both at a party, and Rocket had given Judy the money to get band together that day. Well, 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 you know, we'd overserved ourselves. And he said, if you can in my phone, you got that gig. You know, it was about three o'clock in the morning. So I rang him up. I rang him up on nine four zero five one nine six at about half past nine the next morning because I'm I'm hot with phone numbers. Right. I'm really. I don't know why. I mean, I can still remember. You know. Yeah. It, but I, it's one of those weird things. You know what I mean? We've all got little idiosyncrasies, that's and that's one of them it? with me. But anyway, so I phoned him up, and um, we so we put an, an advert in Melody Maker for drummers, and Jeff Rich phoned up. And I said, oh, we've got to try him. And that was that, you know, he, he came along. He's a very, pow very powerful player, is Jeff. Yes, very, he is. Very, yes. He's, yeah, you know, he's a very powerful player. Yeah. Yeah. You know, credit where you. I mean, I, I think that, I think he played um, two albums he did with us. I think he played Out of His Skin on. I think he played Out of His Skin on In The Army. Um, whether you like it or not, you know, that's just, that, that track itself, In The Army, that's a it's a really difficult song to play and it's really swinging and that's a lot down to Jeff that is you know you know what I mean yeah. that tempo is a really hard tempo to make it yeah to make it swing and then the other album we did an album called Out the Influence and he played that was his last album with us I think oh no there was another one which was awful but um yeah Under the Influence he played Out of His Skin on that that's was one of our better albums I think yeah, yeah. but then I would, you know that was funny the first one Mike Paxman was just so do you want to fast forward or do you want to talk about lockdown? I don't mind. I've got, I've got <laughs> ages. <laughs> I want to ask you about... Uh, it, it wasn't long after... Oh, Climax. Was... Oh, well, so when I was Climax story... Yeah. I got the, funny enough, I got them from, it, from an advert as well. I've never not got an audition. Oh, right. When I, I, did, I auditioned for Kim Wilde with Jeff. And luckily, I knew the bass player. The bass, there was a bass player and a drummer there for when individual musicians came in. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like the drummer would, would play with the bass players and, all, and vice versa. Anyway, it was Mark, Mark Hayward Chaplin, who I knew quite well. And he said, oh, good to see you. Know, great to see you. God, I've got so many boring stories. Um, anyway, he said, right, they're going to tell you this bit because of a song called Love Cats, right? And it's really, it's it's not complicated, but it's a bit odd. I'll show you it. <laughs> so he showed me it. And, you know, they're, they're there and I'm playing the guitar. And, Could you play with your guitar a bit more low strung? I thought, oh, here we go. Yep, yeah, I'm in. And uh, I said, would you mind getting your hair dyed black? No, no problem. I'm in. I've got this. Then, then the, the uh, brother comes out. Right, OK, yeah, right. All right, we've got to check, got to check you out musically now, man, you know. And he played this, this, I think it's called Love Cats or something, or Love Blonde or something. Yeah. And he's got this really bit, little fiddly bit. And, I, and he, he went, Can you play this? And I just went, What, that? <laughs> that's because the bloke had taught me it <laughs> 10 minutes before. So, so, Oh, wow, oh, that's really good. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, you know. You asked me, you know, you asked me to play it, I played it. <laughs> but, um, oh, Kim White, you know what, it's funny how things happen. It was the first message on the first answer phone I ever got was that the, ba the from a guitar player that became a dear friend of mine who's on Rhino's Revenge album, Rhino's Revenge one, who sadly drank himself to death. A, and he's the best he's the best guitar player I've ever worked with. But um, the first message on my first ever answer phone was from him to say that the bass player from Teardrop Explodes was a friend of his, and they were looking for a bass player, and he recommended me. 
So there you go. Lovely. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's anyway, that's how I got that. Climax, yeah, I got funnily enough, the guy from Kim Wilde, um, I was between him and me for Climax Blue Band and I and I got it. And he said, Oh yeah, I'll turn that down. I thought, you fucking I thought, no you did no you didn't. <laughs> Yeah. I know you, you know. And so, I mean, I was busy at the time. You know, this is what you're saying about before quite I came back from Texas on the 23rd of December and I went and I left and I left with Climax Blues Band on the 26th yeah. to go off to uh, Thailand and, and Malaysia. I mean, my, I don't know how my wife is still with me. I, maybe she just doesn't like me and so when I'm not there, it's, it's good. Well, they often no, say I mean, the longevity of your marriage if you're not We are together. a rarity. I don't know any other, I don't know any other, or very few other people in the music business who've got uh, uh, such a crap relationship. I mean, it's such a good relationship. Um, <laughs> no, you know, we've, we've, yeah, we've been together since she's 19, you know, and I mean, the other thing is about the sex and drugs and rock and roll. The drugs and rock, you know, and what would be funny, the drugs and rock and roll are all right, but the sex is, you know, yeah, not for me. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. It's a bit pointless. It's just, you know, I think. Anyway. Well, I've heard enough. people say that when it, when it's given to, handed to you on a plate, it, it loses its appeal somewhat. You have to put yourself in the room to, for it to be on a plate, though. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. You know, yeah. and so you just, you know, you just don't go to, you don't go down to the bar. Yeah. You know, you just sit in your room and do loads of drugs. <laughs> um, never mind. <laughs> Not that, I, not that I did, of course. Absolutely not. I know you're a, what, you're a bit of a, a, a wine buff. Would you describe yourself as a connoisseur? No, wino. Okay. I'm no, I'm rhino the wino. So do you, you're not I'm a not, connoisseur. You just... I know, I know, I know. Well, funny enough, I'm drinking a nice glass of um. Now, what would I call it? Oh, well, it's, it's a vineyard tintin. It's Spanish. It's it's a, it's a really it's vineyard soul, but it's 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 quite nice. All, all, slightly off try. I know what I like. And I know, a, I, I know a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Andrew Bound knows a lot about wine mm-hmm. from, from experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good lad. He is. He's a really good lad, is Andrew. He's funny as anything. Yeah. Well, I had a, I had a chat with him during lockdown, actually. The lockdown one. And... Um, Yes, it was. Oh, he's, much, dr- he, he's droll, isn't he? It was very much like this. It was. Uh, I just asked a question and sat back. It was lovely. <laughs> oh yeah, he's. A, I, I, really, I love Andrew. Yeah. I really so when do. you when you when you joined Status Quo, were, were you a fan beforehand? I'm going to tell you two things here. Do you, have you ever read the, have you ever seen? Do you ever read the Beano? Yeah. The Bash Street Kids. Uh huh. Well, I, we, we Andrew didn't play on the in the army now album until most of it had been done and he walked in the control room and the first thing he said to me was he looked at me and went plug <laughs> <laughs> that's, when I, that's when I knew we were going to get on that was funny right. that was funny <laughs> yeah he just looked at me plug <laughs> uh. what's the point of taking yourself seriously yeah no, except when, except when you need to, but you know, you've got, you've got to laugh, you've got to be able to laugh at yourself, you know, and I'm not, well, I mean, obviously I'm the best looking, but, you know, do it, and I just have my own specific look. Um, anyway, um, w- w- um, what was it, oh, when I joined the band, I saw Quo in 1971 at my local club in, in Twickenham, and I mean, I was spoiled, you know, the amount of bands I saw at my local clubs, of course, there's no venues anymore, hardly any. I mean, you know, I saw Quo one week, I think, I think the week after that, oh, they were supported by Thin Lizzy as well. Go on. In a, about 150, 200, 200 capacity venue, you know, we all sitting on the floor. But I mean, I, I saw Black Sabbath the day their first album came out, uh, Deep Purple, um, um, Mock the Hoople, Uriah Heap, uh, and so many other bands. You know, free, of course, you know, used to follow them around. Um, it's just, oh, Canned Heat, I saw, I was just saw so many amazing bands, and loads that I prob- I, I've forgotten about. You know, and it was a real, it was a real great time. And uh, anyway, Quo was just one of the bands. And I remember thinking, well, it was all right. You know, it looked a bit, it looked, it looked really simple, you know, it sounded really simple. And of course, when I joined, I realised, well, when I started playing with them, I realised it wasn't at all. It only works one way. Yeah. This is why, which is why, and there's a lot of really nice people in tribute bands, don't get me wrong, but some of them, some of the, some are, some are better than others, that's for sure. Yeah, you, it's just, there's a certain thing in it, and you've actually got to be quite good. You know what I mean? It's no good just, it's no good just to, 
Oh, there's nobody there. So I thought someone at the door, the dog was barking. <laughs> um, you've got to pile in, and you've got to pile in the right way. You've got to know what you're doing. And, and, and when our, our drummer Matthew got, when Matthew was with us, he got really sick at one time. We cancelled loads of shows, and we wondered whether we might be better off getting someone else in to finish the tour. And I, I spoke to Damien somebody, and I can't think of his last name. He plays for Primal Scream and Massive Attack, and he's really good, you know. Yeah. But um, I just said, oh, you know, he said, oh, Quo. He said, I, he, he couldn't do it. He said, I would adore to play with Quo because of the, because of the dying art of the shuffle. And I just thought, you would know, you would know exactly what to do, mate. You know what you're on about. You know, you, you, you've got to know what you're on about, if yeah. you like. You've got to know where, you've got to know where the beat, where the beat is. You, you know what I mean? You're a player. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how good you are, but you're, you know, if you're a player, then you're, you're you know, you know, you know, you know, as James Bannon said, you've got to know where the one is. Yes, I know what you mean. You I know, know what you mean, yeah. yeah, and you've got to know where the one is. And, and quote, quote is a, it's it's a really small thing, but it's a huge thing as well because if you're not on the right one, you ain't gonna, you're not gonna, it's not going to sound right in, in in bands. I mean, especially in bands that don't play with computerized stuff. Yeah, you know that's why the, some of the early quote records are so good. It's like really one, two, three, four, and everybody's just playing their own version, their own bit. Yeah, for the, for the song, you know. Oh, that's that's a chemistry, you know. I love a bit. I love a bit of chemistry in bands. You know, we we've had it. A few, we've, we've had it a few times. So we, yeah, I've had a great time. We, uh, you know, we did a song called Let's Rock, and um, and Rick wasn't there, so we, me and Francis we wrote it, I suppose. But it was. I'm, I'm in the studio with Francis, right? And we just we just jammed the whole thing through with the drum machine, you know. And he's put, and we're just putting all these bits and playing on each other. And I think I'm thinking, hold on a minute. That's this, this is the boat I used to watch on top of the pops. Yes. Yeah. You know, I had a bit. I had a bit of a moment there, and we're jamming and really getting off on it. You know, on on, on the on getting off on each other sounds a bit homoerotic, but it's not. You know, the the, the musically, you know, it's like wow. You know, we stopped and he went, "Yeah, it's all right, wasn't it?" You know, <laughs> it's quite. It can be. He's understated, but I know he really likes it because he wouldn't have said that if he didn't. So when you first joined the um, band, was you hired? Was you hired like as, as a session musician, or was you like part of the band straight away? Uh, no, um, no, it didn't take long. Um, I joined. Well, I didn't join at all. Um, we were doing in the army now, and um, again, you know, the day after that finished, like the, the, the night that finished for me, I, they they dropped me at Hatfield Forum, and I and I started production rehearsals for Judy Zook tour, which I went out two days later. Right, and. The first TV show I did with Crow, no, the second TV show I did with Crow, I was actually also on it with Kim Wilde. So, you know, I think they probably thought I was some sort of hot shot session player, which I suppose when you think with what I'm telling you, it probably sounds like I, I probably was. Yeah. You know, um, I, shouldn't, it's, I mean, I don't think of myself like that, you know, I really don't. But, um, uh, and, and anyway, we, we, I did the album and um, they said, would you like to do some shows? And I said, yeah, all right. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, you know, so, yeah, well, yeah, I, no, the, 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 the reason I'm saying that Andy, is I was actually started to cut, cut quite a niche for myself where I do a project which would involve the, an album or, or whatever, and then a bit of promo for, or maybe a small tour, you know, and then I'd move on to the next project. You know what I mean? It was really yeah. quite, it been quite seamless, really. So it was, it really was only another another gig, right? And I said, well, actually, I, I mean, I really fancied it, you know, because I, I really liked the people. Yeah. You know, it was, it was really, you know, it was a real, it was a very war, warm environment, albeit completely addled with drugs and alcohol. But it was still good, you know, it was it was great fun. Really, really good fun. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I have to say, I, I mean, when, when we were doing it in the army now, I, I've got to say, I'd, I'd never seen, um, it was quite an eye-opener. In the rock and roll side of things, in the um, <laughs> it's but well, in the in the um substance substance department, you know, yeah. and the and the boo and the booze. I mean, it was, it was like fucking. I oh, know oh, it was really like, oh golly, you know, that's a bit wild. And it, they really were, you know. But anyway, they asked me if I wanted to do a few gigs, and uh, I, we did, and, and we were in. It was a day after Chernobyl. We we were in Graz when Chernobyl happened. Right. And the day after that, I think we were in Zagreb, and I was walking in the hotel. In, um, and I'd really, I'd, yeah, I'd had a great time, you know. And I said to Francis, um, you know, I'd really need, I'd really need to know if if you want me to join the band or not. And he said, hey, you've been, he said, you've been in since day one. 
And when I when I met them, I, I mean, I came out. You know, like you see people in cartoons, like in Top Top Cat and all that, yeah. or no. What's it, what's it called? Tom and Jerry, you know. Right. And they walk around and their heads sort of... Like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was so loud. I couldn't believe it. I'd never played anything that loud. And at the end of it, they go, oh, really great. That was, I really enjoyed it. It's great to play so quietly for a change. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, so, can you say that again? I didn't quite hear it. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, status quo fans on the whole are like. I mean, they're, they're a great bunch, but you've, you've you've taken a lot of stick over the years from a certain sector. Does that get tiresome for you? Um, it did at first. I think. Well, it didn't sort of get me get me any stick. But when people, I, mean, I think the worst thing I had thrown at me was a petrol can, um, and that hit me on the shin in Belgium, and that really hurt me. But um, oh, I had a pair of pants thrown at me. We, uh, women's women's huge pants at the Reading Festival. Um, what else? Um, I've been gobbed at loads, given the finger. Um, uh, but, you know... Because you're not Alan. It <laughs> didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't... Well, no, it, you know, I, I, it, it got to me for about... Till, till I had... Um, we were playing in Ireland, and these kids were gobbing at me. And they were gobbing and gobbing at me, you know, and laughing. And I took my, and I took my bass off, and I was going to smack the fuckers over the head. Yeah. And Francis just pulled me back and said, just leave it. Yeah. I mean, I was really, I was going to really hurt them. I was so fucking livid. Oh, sorry, I started swearing there. <laughs> so that won't go in either. But, um, well, you can bleep it, whatever. I was so livid. And, um, and I thought, yeah, you know, you're right. So now, oh, they, now you're confusing. They, they can, I thought about this the other day, funny enough, because there's, there's, a, there's a couple of websites that I've had a look at and I mean, this idiots there. Yeah, there's some real idiots, you know, who, who think they who think they know everything and they know nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, you know, and they think they yeah they just have have an idea, how, 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 you know, they just they just know nothing and they think they know everything. But they are the, the ones that stuck me off. They are confusing me with someone that gives a word that sounds that rhymes with duck. <laughs> You know what I mean? I said, I can't. Life's too short. I mean, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be. A, I don't want to have any association with negative people. You know, what's the point? Or who, live, who live on the? Who, who, as Francis said, live live on the fumes of the seventies. Yeah. Go on. I, I, it, the thing for me, I, I just don't get. I just don't understand it. Is I mean, I, I used to like Adam and the Ants when I was a kid. Then. When they reformed with just Adam Man, I wasn't that keen, so I just stopped listening to them. I, I wouldn't have dared say, "Well, they shouldn't com- They shouldn't carry on." <laughs> just doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah, they had a, they had a serious bass player in that band. Yeah, I think he was, was another session player. Yeah, I, I noticed. Funny enough, you know, I needed to write with Marco Peroni. All right, yeah. Yeah, he phoned me up in the nineties, and I was if I fancy to write, and I, and I did, but he didn't do lyrics. And I and I and I at that time I didn't do lyrics either. Right. So I, that's a, that's a a skill I've either learnt or I just blag mercilessly, depending on your opinion of my lyrics. But, um, <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about him in a minute, but uh, oh, good. Because <laughs> we got we, in, in a minute we'll get round to uh, what we, we, we you, you, your song. I was going to ask you about the Frantic Four re- reunion when it happened. What was your what was your views on it? Well, you know, this is this is something that didn't go down very well. I went to see it at Howard Odeon and it was dire. But it was also one of the best gigs I've ever been to. The atmosphere was absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I, I was really, you know, I was really, really pumped up. I mean, oh man, Spud comes in, you know, I mean, that guy's got no time, you know, and he doesn't get it. He's a lovely, a lovely bloke, I mean, I don't, and I don't mind if you put that in at all. By the way, I really don't care, you know. And I mean, uh, and I'd come up with a thing for enough to stop. I, I took a little thing that I said to enough. Why don't you make one of these? You could even make it on a on a three D printer so you can put it and put it. In. So basically, it's a pick. That, that it's a pick that you you know, like you have um, tubes that you put on your fingers and you'd have a pick on it and then you tape it all together so your pick couldn't fall off. All right. You know, and he was like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, great idea. And I, I know, but you, I knew he wouldn't do it. He's an arrogant fucker, he is. <laughs> but, um, 
But again, I like him, you know, but he's, he, he's, he, he's just bitter. And you, life's too, sh- you know. Yeah. I keep saying it, don't I? Life's too short. Yeah. But I saw uh, John... But I, I, thought, I, I thought, I I went to see it the second time, and it was so much better, but it wasn't as good. I got to agree with you because I even you know you, you you look at it and just when I first saw it the and I, I never went to a concert I, you couldn't get a ticket for love and the money, but I listened mm. to it and I remember thinking this is it it feels not something not, it highlighted how good the the other quo is <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it depends what you know. It depends what you what you're looking for. I mean, if you want, it also I t- I'll tell you what. By the way, Nuss vocals were amazing. Yeah. Oh, that was quality. I mean, I couldn't believe that he was so so frail and se- and given it the, that welly. Oh no, that was most impressive. I mean, I'm, hey, I'm a fair man, you know. Credit where it's due. Yeah. But I mean, he kept dropping the pick, you know. I mean, and he wouldn't. He didn't. He, he, and I know he would never even think of, of trying what I'd suggested, you know. And it would have worked, and he would have been able to get through the gig like that. Rick was a powerhouse. He was absolutely. If it was, if it hadn't been for Rick, it would have been. It would. It, it just would have fallen apart. Rick was brilliant. I, you know, I know. You know, I know our players do. You know, and um, I saw him. You know, and he was telling G enough up all the time, and he was slowing down. You know, keeping an eye on enough. Yeah. You know, and so let Francis get on with it, and, and by the same time, Frank. You know, he, he, cra- he said to me, I, he said, I crank. He said that and was spitting feathers. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, you know, he really, he, he adored it. Um, but, but, of course, he catches up with you. And I think it wasn't too long after that, he had his second heart attack, you know. Yeah. But I texted, you know, and, he, I mean, you know, I was, I was very close with Rick for a long time. And um, when I, I texted him, I said, mate, you were the star of the show. You were fucking amazing. And he, he said to me about, well, about a year and a half later, he said, you know what? He said, I've still got that text on my phone. He said, I look at it sometimes. I can't believe you said that. Mm. Which is nice. Well, which was nice. Yeah. I mean, it all came about from the the Hello documentary, that, that reunion. And I was watching oh, it. Yeah. I had a little look at it t- this morning. Uh, I say a little look at it. It lasts about three hours, doesn't it? Um, yeah. There's a bit at the end, and I've got to ask you about it, if you don't mind. Alexa Morris, the producer, she's she says, and she quotes... Uh, I thought Rhino was going to be a bit of a pain to work with, but it all turned out all right. What what, what do you think she meant? You have to ask her. I have no idea. <laughs> have you well, not you seen know, that? Are you, are you finding me a pain to work with? <laughs> not at all. That's the thing. I no, I mean, the, I mean the, the good thing is the half million pound fee is working out really well, Andy. You know, you're getting the piece <laughs> of me. You know. No, I thought he'd be a pain in the ass. I thought he'd be a bit of a pain. Yeah. Well, I have no idea why she said that. Yeah, it was just, but it's on the it's on the extras DVD, and I thought I'd ask if you what you thought it meant because it's uh, it seems like a an odd thing. She to said say. That I, I thought he'd be a pain, but he wasn't. Yeah, or he was all right. Yeah. Oh well, I don't care. You know, <laughs> again, I'm referring to my previous statement. You're referring me to somebody, <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is a song that I'm actually working on at the moment. Do You're it. confusing me with somebody that gives a word that rhymes with duck. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Well, anyway, carry on. Let me ask you because it, it, it's a, it's a question that I like to ask. What do you what do you think is uh, is the appeal of uh, status quo or or indeed a status quo show? Uh, the appeal of a sta- the appeal of status quo is okay. Well, I mean, I, I think I can. I, I, I sort of say that this in different ways, right? I like the, the the thing I like to do. I like to get recognised. I don't like to. I don't like to get recognised. But what I do like is if I get recognised in Lidl or Iceland or Aldi, because that's where our fan base is. We play to. We, our music is for. It, it's very. It, it's we you know we as far as I'm concerned. People people think of us as on the same level as them. If you like, uh, you know. Of course, they're absolutely wrong because you know we're stinking rich rock stars. <laughs> but, um, oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. Um, but I, 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 that's why I like to get recognised because I just think that we are we are we are about the working people. They like it. It's, it's earthy. It's you know it's earthy and it's and it's honest. Yeah. And, and it's also got to, 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 you know and all bosh bosh bosh. You know, it's not. It's hard to play, but it's, and, and also anyone who says three chord songs are hard to, are, are easy to write is a 
as um, isn't he think? Mm. Is isn't he? Is not a very clever person. You know, people think it's easy to write a three chord trick. They're the most difficult songs to write. How many times have you know? Yeah. You know, look at rock and roll over the world. I mean, it's such a dog simple song. I don't know. We didn't write it. But the the, the gift, the, the cleverness that Quo had was a finding that song because you have you heard the John Fogerty version? Yeah. It's not very good, is it? Not at all. No. Not no, all and then Rick, and Rick came over with the you know, which is. Some old bloody thing out of out of some sort of musical thing, I think it is, you know, or Reginald Dixon or someone. <laughs> but you know, so you know, Quo were always able to put to put their stamp on things, which is another great thing. You know, it could only ever be status quo, and if you like it, you're hooked. Yes. You know, I mean, I know. I, well, I mean, I don't know whether you. Well, have you, you, were you a fan of the old Quo? How old are you? Um, I, I I got into them, and I I can give you the date. It was in uh, May nineteen eighty two. It was the the NEC show. That was the one that. Oh yeah, the Prince's Trust. Yeah. 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 It was on well, that there you night. go. Well, good because you saw the old band as well. That's good to know. But no, I'm just saying that. Well, well but uh, it was, uh, but you still carried on with a new band. Well, that's good. Yeah, of course. But I I think there's a there's a brilliant quote from Bob Geldof in the uh, one of the Live Aid documentaries when he kind of says. If you want the lads, here they come. And I thought that, that's exactly it. That's it. It's it's like it, here come the lads. They're your mates. It, you know, there's no pretension oh, about totally. it. They're anything. the person you want to have, you want to have a pint with and talk about football. Yes, absolutely. Which we nearly have. Which is well, we nearly did. just doesn't drink or talk about football, but he's still good company. <laughs> yeah. Let me um, let me ask you about Rick, because not just a not just a band mate, but um, a, a good friend of yours, right? Yeah, it was it was a, we were very very close. Um, we really, we really were. We, you know, I mean, when when he um, he was living in Bat- Battersea, and, and we were talking, he said, "Well, I need to move." I said, "Well, come and live in Tennington. It's great. You'll love it." And so he said, "All right, then." That was that. You know, so he just bought a place in Tennington and moved in, and we and we were, yeah, we were very close. I mean, you had to dodge the custard pies occasionally. You know, he could he could he could throw you a custard pie. You know, right in the eye when you're not expecting it. Right. But um, you know, that's just how he was. You know. Um, you, you know, when someone, when someone is, what's the word? What's the word when you're not, not unreliable, isn't the word? You, uh, it, uh, when you're une- uneven, that's not actually the right word. But when you, uh, it was quite uneven. And, and but, uh, I, 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 but don't you just got to say, okay, do I, do you know, do I take it or not? And I thought, fuck it. Oh, no, I thought, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, you know, but um, we, were, we were very close, although I have to say that we had drifted apart a bit. When he met, um, when he met his third wife, I think he, um, yeah, th- he definitely changed. And, and, he, and he, he, wasn't, he, didn't beca- he wasn't my mate anymore. Right. I mean, he was my mate, you know, absolutely, we were still friends, but it, it was like, um, yeah, he just thought, he, he changed as a person, he changed. And, and uh, what he changed into wasn't what, wasn't what I knew of Rick, and, I, and it wasn't. I don't think it was him. You know, he, I think he changed. In, I think he changed into a, what, what he would like to have been. Hold on a minute, I've got to think about this. He became what he thought he should be, if you like. Yeah. And uh, and that that kind of didn't involve me as much. And um, actually, that was his. It's, you know, that's his loss. You know, not my not my loss. He, you know, if he didn't want it, that, yeah, that's his that's his loss as far as I'm concerned. And I still love him to bits, and he, you know, I still think about him a load. And um, uh, in fact, I thought it was something today, and I can't think of what it was. Something his take on things, you know, he had quite, an, he had a very one-off way of, of describing things. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, uh, there you go. You know, I mean, it's four years this year. It's incredible. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, 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 four years in two in two days' time. In two days' time. I mean, with the exception yeah. of the with a cancer scare in 2005 and he had his second near fatal heart attack in 2016 after, was it straight after a gig is that what happened in turkey yeah and anyway he had one in 2014 didn't he in croatia right but, oh god i was just about to think so um oh yes um his son harry has had a boy called james who was born on rick's birthday oh. how about that eh? Lovely. this year yeah so welcome, welcome, little James. Yeah, Harry. Harry lives in Geneva, and um, yeah, he's had a little boy. So there you go. Parfit lives on. Yes, indeed. The Parfits live on. So uh, yeah, Rick in Turkey, 2016. Was it? Was it after the? Was it after the gig backstage or? Uh, it was. His life was. His life was saved by a kebab. How do you mean? 
we did the gig. He said to, funny enough, he said to, he said to the woman he was living with at the time, he said, I don't know I'm coming back from this. Because he, he'd been feeling so weird. He said, hey, we were in the car on the way to the airport. And he said, he, go, he said, oh, it's starting again. And I said, why? And he said, I feel so fucking weird. And then about a sec, 10 seconds later, he said, it's gone now. You know, all, all, all the time, furiously chubbing on his um, inhaler, you know, whatever it is, e-cigarette. Yeah. But um, we got the gig and it was one of the best gigs we've done in years. Which was like, which was fortunate, really. And he and I, he, you know, we don't all come off. It's very rare that, you know, it's like on a gig, you don't all come off and say, wow, that was amazing. Yeah. But we did that night, funnily enough. We really loved it. He went to his room. I remember the room, I remember it vividly. It was, this hotel was so over the top. Anyway, we had kebabs and Lyanne went to take, and Lyanne went to take him his kebab. And while he was, while she was there, he had a heart attack. Yeah. So if she, if she hadn't, um, if she hadn't actually just happened to have been there, giving him, uh, giving him a kebab, he'd have, de- he'd have died. Wow. And um, it, it, it's, you know, it was. This is typical of Rick because there was um, the hotel was a real massive hotel, but we found reception straight away, and um, there'd be an ambulance had just had just left there. Yeah, yeah, it was two minutes. It was two minutes away. It just left because it had been there for something else. So they came straight back, right. and, I, and I'm just sort of. And it's only me in there with him. I want to think Lyanne was, and they were giving it all the electric shock and all that. God. And he was alone. This woman just looked at me and put a put a finger across her throat and said, "Dead." Jeez. And it was really surreal. And then um, anyway, he, he he started breathing again, and they said so they took him to the hospital and. Um, and I, I, I went with him. If no one else did, I went. With, I don't mean no one else did, but I, I thought, I would, you know, if he's going to die, I can't leave him to die on his own. So I went with him, and um, I suppose we were there about three hours. And the doctors came out and said basically that, well, he's alive, just, and if he makes it through, I think he's going to be permanently brain damaged. Which I did make myself laugh. I said, brain damaged. I think, <laughs> I think you're a bit late for that. <laughs> <laughs> which did make me, you know, a, a yeah. sort of like gallows humour almost. But yeah. um, and then we we came back the next, you know, we flew back from the state shop the next day, and then um, Simon Porter, our manager, rang me up that evening and said, "Look, we've got a gig on Saturday," and he said, and, and um, it was a charity gig we were doing for for I don't know if you remember a few years ago there were floods up in Cumbria, big floods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were doing a um. A benefit for that, and, uh, and he, he said, that, "Of course." He said, he said, "Without being ironic, if we don't do the gig, they'll go under." Um, and so um, I rang Freddie because he'd done one gig with us before, and I said, "Can you do it?" He said, "Well, I don't know, I think so." You know, he's, he was on tour, and they, they were doing a radio show in Leeds. Anyway, we worked it out that the radio show let them do it an hour early, and we got we he got a helicopter up to um, the gig. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always. I'm always pleased for my kids. I don't like to say I'm proud of them because I think that's, you know, it's not, it's not for me to say. But um, in this instance, Freddie came up. We had no rehearsal, no sound check, no nothing. Um, he, plugged in, he plugged in to a guitar he'd never played um, and, did this, and did it spotlessly. Amazing. No cock-ups at all. We couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, was, I, and, and that, that was, I was really proud of it. And then the drum solo when I said, "How's it going?" He said, "One bar at a time." <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an amazing player. Anyway, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah, uh, he's really great. He's, he's a serious, he's, he's a seriously good player. I mean, I, I, you know, I love, and I love his rock playing. Yeah, you know, he's a fantastic rock player. I mean, you know, if you, do you know the Quail albums much? I, I, only all of them. <laughs> oh, I, well, we did a song called Bad News. Brilliant, love it. And. um you know, basically, Freddie did the solo on my demo, and Francis did it, and he tried to come up, and he just phoned me. He said, "I can't do better than that." He said, "That's really good." So, you know, let's leave Freddie on. So that's Freddie on that on the Crow album. Um, oh no, I mean, I, I, if you're not familiar with my stuff, there's a song I think called "Busy Doing Nothing," which has got Freddie playing. We Freddie's playing guitar on loads of it, but the guitar solo is awesome. Yeah. And first, he did it, he did it, I kept it for my original demo, which, because it's an old song, I think he was 17 when he did it, it was first take, and it's just pure Paul Kossov, you know, who happens to be one of my favourite guitar players ever, I've... which was nice, yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah, I will, definitely, I, I remember yeah. Francis Rossi actually saying, somebody asked him who he, you know, has he seen anybody play the guitar that he's impressed with, and he actually named Freddie, but this was years ago. 
Well, Al Francis was great, my Freddie. He really was. I mean, he, you know, he, um, he was saving up for a Les Paul and he put money in, in, in his pot, you know, and, and I saw him putting £50 in there one day because he was out helping us out on tour. He was um, doing the bags, you know. Yeah. It's about 15. And um, I'm just what I want to say. That's a brainwave. Yeah. Brilliant idea. Fantastic idea. Um, and it was just, well, Christmas is coming early this year. We just decided because our son's coming back, we're going to move Christmas to Christmas Day. But um, <laughs> you know, um, when Freddie was saving up, and, and I said, what's that 50 pounds? Francis gave it to me, but he told me not to tell his dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and him and Francis and Rick taught Freddie loads. They, they gave, used to give him lessons all the time when he was on tour. They both really liked him a lot. He's a lovely guy. It's hard not to like him, you know. And, he's, and the other thing is, of course, like anything, if I found if I find someone keen, then I'm keen to help. You know, there's, there's a lad I went to, funnily enough, I, 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 he got married on Saturday, but we, obviously we couldn't go to the wedding, so we just surprised him outside. But I mean, he's a bass player that I've known since he was 12. And he was dead keen, you know, so I sort of mentored him, mentored him which is why he's crap now. <laughs> 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 um, no, I meant... I meant <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mentored him, you know, which is, and it, yeah, yeah, you know, you want to help out people that, that really want to learn, yeah, and especially they want to learn what you what you can bring to the table. Anyway, my quote career. I was thinking about my songs today, funnily enough, yeah, and I think, and I, I've, I've been actually thinking about two way traffic. I think that's a really good song. Which one? Really sorry, proper, it's a proper rock song. It's called Two Way Traffic. Two Way Traffic's a fantastic track. Yeah. I mean, funny enough, I've uh, in my notes I've actually written down two way traffic and bad news as two of my favourite no, quotes. Really? Uh, yeah. And two way traffic, I don't think anybody ever gets bored of. And the fact that bad news hasn't been in a live set is criminal. It's uh, it's a. I think everybody loves bad news. It's an incredible song. Well, it's not. It's not. It, it, it's proper. You know. It's the new. I mean, I think two way traffic's the newest thing I've ever written a proper quote because you could say that. Um, that bad news sounds like a pastiche, but I don't mean I don't think it does, and I think it's also got really good lyrics. Yeah, you know, the lyrics are they're, they're so they mean so much. You know, to me, it's you've got the riff, then you've got the lyric, yeah. and then you've got the melody. You know, I think yeah, I, you know, I don't like. I mean, somebody taught me a lesson. Funnily enough, this is bizarre. It's the guy who played keyboards on Super Smashing Great. Okay, I was I was um he played a piano for me on a session oh, twenty five years ago, and um. And I was just lowering, lowering the melody, you know. And he said, you haven't got your lyrics. And I said, no. He said, he said, you know, I don't see the point of recording a song before you've got the lyrics. And I've never recorded a song since without having the lyrics, or at least 90%. Because, I mean, how many bands have you been as well when you get everyone's, everyone's walking around the studio deep in thought trying to get the third verse in ten minutes? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, we've all been there, but I don't, not anymore. I mean, I'm a huge Steely Dan fan, you know, and I mean, I'm quite a, I'm not an anorak, but I, I've got quite a lot of the, of the demos and stuff. And, and um, you know, I've got 15 versions of one song. From from the, all the different takes they did as they built it up in the studio, but every lyric was there and the arrangement was totally the same. It was just how people played their parts around it, you know. And that's that's why I always strive to, you know, here's the, here's here is the song. Now, what are you going to do to it? Right. I think that's really important. Not 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 necessarily to come up with the song, but to 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 have pretty much a really good idea. You know, if well, if you're if you're the artist, if you like, which I mean, I suppose I'm, you know, as you know what somebody my my friend we were at my friends the other week, and they've got little kids, and one of them said, "Oh, John, you're such an artist," and his mum said, "Yes, darling, he's a piss artist." <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did digress there, but yeah, it did make me laugh. <laughs> but when do you, when you're writing for your your own band, Rhino's Revenge, do you do you write differently to how you write for Quo? Or you just no, I mean I find I, I find lyrics incredibly hard to write. Um, as I, you know, I mean, I always, it's not you know, it, it, I, I, they, they don't come easily to me. So I mean, it's not uncommon for me to spend a oh, hundred hours working on a lyric at least. You know, it's not uncommon. I mean, Super, Super Smash and Great was quick, but because I had an I had the idea, but um, I probably only spent about 50 hours working on that lyric. You know, funny that a mate of mine who's really sus, he said, how long did you spend on that one then? Hey, come on, come on, how many hours? 
And then they said, it's busy in the summer, the lines. Some of the lines, I met one. I was just demoing it at home, doing a rough demo, but it actually ended up being being the vocal and the bass and the guitar. I've got a little Roland implement, you know, the old um, BR, BR-8? What, uh, a, a keyboard? No, no, on a flash drive. Oh, right. Yeah, the, old, the little A-track, the little A-track with virtual track recorders. I use that. I mean, I just got garage band. I learned how to use it in lockdown. And it's too, it's, it, I don't want it. I don't want that amount of choice. <laughs> you, <mean? laughs> you know, I've got three drum, I've got three drum sounds and three guitar sounds, one vocal and one bass, and that's it, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's still, at the, it's still at CD, you know, 44 hertz, whatever it is. So, you know, I just send that over to my, to Mike Paxman, who's an absolute genius, who I can't, I can't, I can't tell you how highly I rate his talents. Um, but he just takes it over and he says, oh, yeah, no problem. Like, okay, send me a bit more guitar. And then, yeah, and, and the bizarre, yeah, the keyboard, and then I, like, he, he sent it over to America to get the keyboard player from, um, He's from Squeeze and Lanford, but he was, he was in a band called The Sinceros, which you, I think you're too young to remember. Yeah, I don't but know. But they did a, they, he wrote an amazing song called Disappearing. Yeah. Anyway, and I, he played the Air uh, Hammond, and he's really good at playing that kind of ska. It's on a B3 as well, so it's proper. Right. It's not, you know, it's not a sample. And uh, he didn't want playing for anything like that, you know. It was just really nice of him, so I asked him to do the whole album. <laughs> But it's a, it's a um, it's amazing at the moment, isn't it? Because you you can literally you can write something in your house and email it to somebody in America and they can put their bit on and somebody in Germany can do some bits and bobs and it's uh, but a lot of people I think in lockdown have tuned into that uh, that way of recording and working really. Zoom's been uh, very. I mean, I, I don't write, I don't really write with other people. Do you not? No. Nah. It's much harder, but I for them it's much harder. But I don't hear things I don't want to hear, and then I'll, and then I'll give it to Mike and whatever he suggests. It I normally go, why the fuck didn't I? Why the heck didn't I think of that before? Yeah, you know, just little little, little tweaks. But yeah, I work hard. You know, I work hard on it. I mean, the Crow stuff. Funny enough, on the on the last Crow album we did, um, Francis really pulled get pulled the demos I did apart. But then I done all the lyrics. So I didn't really bother. I had the lyrics and the riffs. But he, no, he had the riffs. I had the, I had the, I had the song. He's really clever with me. He knows me. He knows me much better than I think he does, obviously, because he. Um, I say, "You got any bits?" And he send me a couple of riffs, and I'll and I, he'll send me maybe a minute of playing, and I'll take ten seconds of it. And it just, as I said in another interview, it puts you in a room. It puts you in a different room, and a room that you wouldn't normally have, have walked into. And I mean, I'm being far out, man. But in, in, on a musical way, you know, on a writing way, you go. You sort of go to another go. Oh, I like it in here. I can do something here. Yeah, you know, and he know, and he knows what he knows what floats my boat. This is how come we got all, that's the three songs we wrote on the Backbone album. When they, I, I wrote them, no, I don't mean I wrote them. I mean I wrote some of the salient bits, but I wrote the lyrics. But then I gave, I sent it back to him, and then he just said, "Fine, okay, right, um, I'm going to totally take this to reconstruct this now." And he did. He completely deconstructed them both. And um, those two, Backbone was, it? yeah, and all three of them. I mean, that, that, that was a bit of a, it didn't really work as well as I hoped it would, the actual track Backbone. But, you know, it's, it's quite odd. But it, it, I, I, there was maybe not enough variety in it. Yeah. You know, you know, it's hard. I mean, I love songs that are one chord, you know. I love, you know, the song Pink, I'm coming, I'm get the, get the party started. Yeah, yeah. That's one chord. Really? You know. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know that, no. Yeah, well, have, a, have, a, have a look at it, C. <laughs> you know, here's the, here's the tab, C. <laughs> hmm. You know, no, it's great, I love songs like that, you know, where you can give, make, where you, I think I said to you, I said that to you yesterday, didn't I? You know, if anybody who thinks three chord tricks are hard to write, are easy to write, is a t- twit. Yeah. There you go, they're a twit. Yeah, well done. <laughs> anyway. What do you want the drone on? What do you want the drone on about now? Um, well, I was just about to go back to um, uh, when when Rick finally died. I, I mean, weirdly, oh, Rick. but that, that that year, 2016, there were so many celebrities dying. It was, it was. Oh no, I was gutted when Barry died. I'm gutted. I'm going Black Star for me. It's, it's probably my favourite album of the last ten years. Yeah. Have you heard it? Oh yeah, yeah. Black Star. Oh, yeah. I just love it, and and, and I love. And I love it even more that someone is looking death, death straight in the face, and you can still and you can still do that. You can still come up with a with a work. Well, now, that's the highest accolade for me. It's a work of art 
And, you, you know, to me, he came up with a work of art like that in his last month, Geezer. I know. Same as, same as Frank Zappa. I mean, I'm a huge Zappa fan as well. You know, yeah, I mean, a good... It's really weird, isn't it? I mean, it's David Crow, but I mean, I, I was really into um, John McLaughlin and, and um, Chick Corea and Zappa, you know, all these kind of musical things. But in a way, it's kind of, because I was, I was into the blues stuff as well, but in a way, it's good because you, you bring a little bit of a different colour when you come along, you know, so you, 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 it's very subtle. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not as... Nuff's a great... Nuff was a great player. You know, I love the, I, I the fact that he... I, the fact that he wasn't very good makes it even better. <laughs> if you see what I mean, I know. you know it wasn't. It, it, I mean, it wasn't technically accomplished in the slightest. But like all great musicians, he played the song. I mean, the worst drum I ever played was was, was with my, the drummer in Texas. But he did not. Oh, I mean, it was also the best. In that, it was the worst drummer technically, but he could play a song. Gee, could he? You know, he could really add to it. Yeah, like Simon Kirk. I mean, no bad company and free. I mean, do 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 bat and all right now and then. Um, you know, I can't get enough of you. I love songs where drums are hooks. Yeah. Like Run to the Hills, to little them, to little them. You know, anyway, yeah. I'm droning. Um, Not at all. Um, cause, well, I can't remember what you said to me there. No, I, was, I was just about to say, because I, I think a lot of people were confused, because Freddie sort of stood in for a bit and then didn't fancy it, doing it full time. So, no, he didn't. No, he didn't want to do it. He's, and, and, and it was, I mean, talk about an artistic decision. He wanted to stick with his band Flaws. F L A W E S, ladies and gentlemen. I love them. I think they're. Re I think they're great. I can't believe they're not really big already. Check them out, please. If you listen to this, check out Flaws. Um, and he made. But anyway, Freddie made the, an artistic decision. I mean, you know, the, you know, the money's really good in Quo. Yeah. You know, I mean, he could, you know, he could have just, he could have hung in there and earned loads of money. But he said, no, I don't want to do this. I want to be with my, you know, I want, I want to do my, what my career. Francis was begging him to stay. You know, he really was. He said, you know, I really, come on, Freddie. You know, we really, he said, some of the gigs I've done with you have been some of the most enjoyable I've ever done. You know, he said, I really, you know, and everyone was on it him to stay. But he said, no. So he did 23 gigs, I think. And then I got Richie in. Yeah. It's been down in ever since. Yes. Fucking right. Irish winger. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, uh, he, he's, he's a brilliant addition. And do you know what the great thing about Richie is that he's a lovely bloke. I know, that's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. And he's Irish. No, he's, he's lovely. He really is. He's a total sweetheart. And, uh, and, and, and you know, he's, he, he, oh, he, he's, he's perfect. You know, he fits the bill in every in every way. I mean, it's irrele it's irrelevant that he's a fan. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, 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 although it isn't in a way, because he knows. You know, I said to you yesterday, there's only one way to play it, and he knows there's only and he knows that one way. You know, it, it, he's learnt it. You know, yeah. there's a certain weight. There's a certain weight to it. That you know, and I mean, W E I G H C that you have to learn. You can't, you know, you can be a heavy player. It's not the same as the. As the it's, not, it's such a unique thing, this man. Yeah, it, I, I really think it is. I mean, and yeah, when when we, when we go, there won't be when when the, when we stop, there won't be anything else like it. Well, it's a shame. No, I think yeah. Well, some people right. might think that's a really good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, some people might think hurrah, but um, you know, you know, we don't we don't intend to. Uh, we're not hang hanging our axes up, man. Yeah. But when, obviously. Uh, oh yeah, Rick, Rick. Sorry, yeah, Rick. You yeah. were saying about. Yeah. Go on. You um, obviously in the um, in the live set, you had to sort of take over some of Rick's songs. Was that an easy d d decision? Which ones to take? Um, I, well, I, well, I've always wanted to cheerfully murder Rain, and I get my chance every night. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, lo I love you the know, new version of Rain. Listen, I can't, I can't, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not a great singer, but I'm a good performer. I can, you know, I can really, if, I can really get my teeth into something, and um, and uh, it's been great. And I like we do it that we do it down a key as well, which I really like. It gives it a different, it gives it a different, um, a different sound, if you like. Yeah. And I know, you know, I, I read that a lot of people say I shouldn't be singing, and they're, you know, well, again, you know that, you know that, that word that rhymes with duck, <laughs> you know. Yeah. With an off at the end of it, you know, I don't. It's how it is, and and Richie does a great job, you know. He's um, but we're different. I've got, a, I'm a quite, uh, I've got quite a bluesy way of singing. I think, yeah, you know, <laughs> it might give people the blues, but I, I like. It's a, 
So songs like that really suit me, I think. Um, I can't do Welsh. Oh, and, uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of more, 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 what's the word? The songs that Rick sang are more, are more what I might like, what I would like to sing. And only because the songs Francis sang, well, I mean, I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly going to try and take over from Superman, am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, they, yeah. they, they, there's a man with a with a voice, a voice from heaven. It's just a blessing. I mean, I hear stuff that he does, you know, and he still sounds 25. You know, oh, but he, you know, he takes care of himself. I mean, so he's, you know, he's an incredibly healthy man. Or woman, no, no man. That's right. He's incredibly healthy. It was he's an incredibly healthy man. <laughs> it's only like I was sort of doing something with men's health or something, you know. Anyway, so that's up. You would have thought Not you, me. You would have brought in um, tracks that you sang on into the live set when that when that happened, like Bad News. I thought it would no, no. Fun. I actually said I, when when we started doing this, I said I want to sing Rain. I actually I said I want to sing. I want us to do Rain, and I want to sing. And, that, and, that, and I really sort of put my foot down there. Yeah. Said I'm singing that, and um, yeah, because I just really like the song. You know, that's that's a great, it's a great riff, great great me- deep and meaningless lyrics. You know, yeah, what's not to like? And and, and some and some great musicality in it. You know, especially yeah. the bit at the end when the keyboards are going da da. They're doing the, they're doing the bridge part over the verse. Oh. That's mental. Yeah, love it a bit. Yeah, I love a, I love a bit of madness in music. Yeah, I think Paper Play. That's that's got a bit of madness about it. As in, it's got madness about it. In the the record is one of my favourite records of Crows. You know, it's so it's so animal. Yeah, it's got it's got some real madness in it. So I mean, it's got some some proper intent. You know, and if you if it, has, if it hasn't got intent, it's just crap. That's what I think. On the Bula, on the Bula Quo album, talking of sort of strange songs, your the, oh. your Fiji time is love it. I, I love I, it. It's it's so it's so different from everything else that it's the one song in the in the summer. I always play it on my radio show because it's it's got it, it it's just got summer written all over it. It's a fantastic uh, just the beat of it. It's, it's it's I don't think I've heard anything else like that song. Do you know what? I'll have to send you the demo. Oh, please the do. demo is a song I wrote. A, it, it, the demo is in French. It's just the, 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 basically I wrote a song. Uh, the demo because I, I got oh, okay. Bit of a story. I got a Dan Armstrong plexiglass bass. You know the one I mean? Yeah. I bought one in 1969, and um, I thought I just loved it. You know, and I, I got I got my I got my implement out one day, darling. And uh, funnily enough, <laughs> this was really quick song, and it's all basses, except for there's one guitar part which I put no two actually. But I wrote it on. I wrote it on bass, and I put another bass on it. And, and, and it's called Côte, d'Am, Côte d'Azur, and it's yeah, it's a, a French song, you know, all, all in French. And then when we came to do the film, I played it to the. Um, I said to the director, I want to write uh, this, and um, he said, well, if you can make that into if you can make that into a lyric, then there you go, you know, th- then that would be great because I thought it was perfect for the film. Like, even though it was a scar tune, which isn't very Fijian, but their music is crap. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> It's all, it's all bloody, um, no, not mandolins, what's that, ukuleles, you know, dusky maiden, I love you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Bugger <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean, under the coconut, uh, oh, that's not, I don't mean to be racist, it's not, you know, it's basically, yeah, singing love songs under the coconut trees, you know, which I suppose is what's available there, you know, there's lots of coconuts. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, that was, yeah, it was a very unpleasant experience for me there, that film. I was going to ask what you wanted. I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, like I said to you, when I do a gig, the first thing I do is go away. Yeah. You know, and get out there. And of course, this is just hanging around and hanging around for hours, you know, and not and to not even be in the shot, not even to have anything to say, just sort of be looking at the back, you know. Yeah. So you're, so you're in the shot. It's like, oh, God, you know. No, filming I couldn't do. Oh, did, did you hear Did you hear um, Tom Cruise's outburst? Yes, I did, yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. But I loved it. I thought what he said was so to the point. I know. I know. You know, so obviously someone had been out, hadn't they? I mean, he'd, he'd been caught someone, people had been, you know, flouting the rules. Oh, good on him. Yeah. Well, I people, put, some, I Sometimes people need that. On Twitter, I said, it, it's hilarious that somebody's obviously recorded it, put it out in, you know, sold it to the sun, I think it was, just to sort of get him in trouble. And everybody agreed with him. It was, it was hilarious. Oh, it's absolutely... 100 percent spot on. Yeah. Don't fu- 
don't, don't, Donald Duck with things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, what's, what's, how, how, how irresponsible is that? No, I, I was most impressed, but and bizarrely, and, uh, oddly enough, I, I watched Mission, Mission Impossible last night. Okay. And I thought Buller Quo was a bad film. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> It's awful. Uh, I, I mean, he's a, he's a charisma freezer. Although I, I, I watched a Jack Reacher film I liked, but the rest of it, he's a charisma free dwarf, isn't he? <laughs> Jesus, a very rich charisma free dwarf. Yeah. Was like... that being dwarf? Is that being dwarfist? I don't know. I, I used to love uh, Tom Cruise when I was younger. When I when I I trained as an actor and we we had a, I remember we had a class once and we had to go around everybody asking who you're. Uh, Idol was, and and I said Tom Cruise, to which I only got kicked out. Um, are you are you short, Andy? Am I? <laughs> well, no, I just. When, have you seen Rain Man? Oh no, uh, with Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Yes. Well, that for me is. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll check. No, I'll, I'll take you on. I don't believe I've seen it. I think he, he plays the autistic guy, right? D- Dustin Hoffman is the autistic guy. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. look forward to seeing that. Yeah, he is absolutely brilliant in it. But uh, oh, okay, no, that's fair guy. enough. I, that's no, and as I said, I watched him in the, one of the, the first Jack Reacher film. Right, I thought it was really good, and I mean, I was pleasantly, very pleasantly surprised. I thought, oh, this is going to be as shit as everything else I've ever seen. <laughs> but then he did shake Nicole Kidman, so you know, it can't can't be all bad, can it? No. Uh, no, that's not going to go in, is it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where were oh the other song I like on Bullet Crow, I like, I like the the, uh, the Run and Hide song I did. Yeah, yeah. That's quite, that's, uh, you know, that's a bit nice, not, not, nice and heavy. I love the soundtrack. I, I, I'll be honest with you, the film. I haven't got, I haven't got all the way through it yet. Oh no! Well, uh, lucky you. And I've tried. You know, you, you can get, you, a lot of people need therapy if they get through to the end. <laughs> no, I have tried. I. Um... When I interviewed Francis last year, I watched it, <laughs> and it was bizarre because the opening scene, there's this sort of thing of um, uh, like premonition of Rick dying. It's in the paper, and the oh, that's me and him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 I, I pushed him in the thing. Yeah, and I thought this is yeah. bizarre because it was in the, the headline in the paper c- could have been written. Yeah, when he actually did. And, so. you, and you know the weird thing is about that, by the way. That scene was shot. It was pissing with rain, and it was and it was completely overcast, and, and it's all CGI. It's all all read, all touched up, right? As, as you can do nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, though. It's quite quite um, not not a premonition, quite a portent. Yeah, and the, and then yeah. like a, the young fan, gonna wanting to take over from him, and it was all very kind of oh hello. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But um, I can't believe that Fiji time wasn't the theme to that film. I found it really weird. Yeah, it definitely should. You know, be. you know. I mean, it was, it was. I, well, I don't know why, but I just thought, surely, you know, that should be the theme. To, and I don't mean because I've written it. I mean, if someone else had come up with that, I would go, oh my god, there you go, that's the theme. Because it's happy as opposed to I can't even remember what it was, but it wasn't very. It wasn't very. You know, it wasn't much to do with the film. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it, where where does it lie in the film? That, that uh-huh. where does the song come in the film? I don't know if I'm sure it's in it. I was going to say because I cause when I heard the sound. I think it's it, in it in one bit, but, but I mean, yeah. What, but yeah, for me, I, I I never understood that. But then I I have to say that I think all Andy. I have to say I think all my songs are great. <laughs> I do because you if you're not the turn, you have to work a bit harder to get your songs in. Yeah, and. I know, and I, you know, I mean, Francis, I'm sure, loves all his songs, you know, and Andrew, but I love all mine as well, I'm, and I'm not alone. I'm not alone in that. Oh, I mean, since Under the Influence, I'd say, you know, there, there was a few before I liked as well, but since Under the Influence, I've been, which was in 1999, I think, or 1997, I've been proud of everything I've ever written that's gone on in any album. I, I love my first solo album as well. I really like, and the second one, I like it all. Yeah. But then, but then I would. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no, but you know, I don't want. I would never put out anything that I didn't think was really good. It's like you. I was always remember you too. I'm not a big fan of this, but they played at Slane Castle, and, and Bono did this whole really great spiel speech about how their parents had each scraped the money together to to, to, to give them four thousand pounds to come to London. 
you know, their their mums and dads have just scrimped, scrimped and saved to get to get a thousand pounds each together. And anyway, and he was just saying about that. And they and they before they started, they said, and this was our first ever single. You know, great. I'd love to think of any song that I did. You know, I'd I'd love to think right. Okay, this song's got this meaning. I'm going to play it now. Yeah. You know, like, you know, as in you're proud of your body. You're proud of your body of work. Because uh, I mean, they, you know, they, people. Like, you know, a lot of people write a lot of people write songs for the money. Yeah. And there ain't, and there ain't any money in it nowadays. So you do it for the art, much more so, I find. Especially at our, you know, our time of our career when we were, you know, we're on the, we're on the uh, downward, downward. We're, we're getting towards the end of the road, I suppose. I mean, it may well, it may well be that I never do another gig. I have no idea, given the way things are at the moment. But I've always said that the music business, I would never retire from the music business. The music business will retire me. And it's quite possible that it will this time round, bizarrely. Yeah. But I fucking hope not. I mean, I, but I really hope not. I can't picture it. I can't picture going to a show. Do you know what I mean? I, it, it's, it's just been such a weird year to stand in a crowd watching a, 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 a gig in a big arena. I just can't even... Well, I think it'll take five years. I, I think it will take a couple of years. You know, provide... Provi- I mean, I, I think COVID will become like flu. Yeah. You know, except it's going to kill everyone. Uh, um, <laughs> no, well, I hope not. But um, I think it'll become another thing that you catch like flu, you know. But it, my, my 101-year-old mother, who, bless her, says, I don't want, I don't want a vaccine. She said, she, she, she said, I don't want a vaccine. Give it to the kids. I mean, yeah, I, I, I said to my mum, well, I'll have yours. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um, but, uh, no, I, anyway, that's what yeah. she thinks. Um, but, uh, yeah, getting back to gigs, um, it's going to be odd, you know. I don't know, what, I don't know what to say. I mean, I've, I've got gigs booked for May. I mean, you know, nah, I don't think they're going to happen. No. Which is a real shame, you know, because I, I, I'm actually do, I, you know, I put more. It, it, this, the whole thing, by the way, with COVID was so bizarre. We ran as revenge but with all the social distancing and gigs being cancelled because so few people come to my gigs. If they'd be social distanced, no problem. They are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my gigs were social distanced before social distancing. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm joking. <laughs> no, no. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I play to, any, to anywhere between more well, three and five people. Yeah, you, you know, you yeah, quite three famously, and a half sometimes. <laughs> you quite famously played with a, a Quo tribute band. Have you done that more than once? Mm. Loads of times. Have you? Because that seems to be a really cool thing to do. I yeah. no, it's, it's, for, it's well, it is and it isn't. You know, basically, I'm a complete music prostitute. No, I just um. I don't know. I mean, but it was a, a, a harsh lesson for me because I figured, oh, my stuff's so original and so different. You know, lots of other people are going to like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and in the in the first in the first couple of tours, yeah, we did a load of gigs with State of Quo, who are lovely people. Yeah. Really, I love them, and they and they're pretty good, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I told you about that one in Scotland, didn't I? What were they called? I don't know, and I don't that, care. Has that got a young lad in it? Oh no, not Jay. No, I know him. No, I played. With, I, I actually that was. There was another band I did with Brino. Have you, have you heard of Brino? I think I have. Yeah, it's Brian. He's, he plays with State of Quo. He's called Brino. I mean, he's just brilliant. You couldn't make that up. Yeah. But he's a lovely guy. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I've I've, 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 um, I've played with a few. I mean, I did Mark Kelly's loads of times. You know, it's gone, don't you? What the in Holland? It's gone. The bar. How was it? Have you ever heard of Have you ever heard of Mark Ellis? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. A, I mean, if you were, it was quo heaven. Francis and Rick should have gone there. They'd have been humbled. Yeah, they really would. You know, there, there's a, there was so much love for those two, those two guys there. And Spud played there a few times. Um, and I played there a few times. And it just it, it, it's the uh, the COVID's done for him. He yeah. was he wanted he was hoping to sell anyway. But yeah, I think he wanted to sell to um, you know, someone that would keep it going as Mark Ellis. But he just went, I think he's just gone under. And it's a real shame, you know, that's a part of Quo, quo Folklore. You know, when I got to play there the first time in Fuchsia Island, and 2015, I think it was, I, I, my band was Max and Freddy, and we had a ball. It was an absolute, it was this hope from start to finish. But I, I yeah, but they, they, got them so, they got them so drunk. <laughs> 
we uh, the second time we did it right we had a uh, max wasn't with us i don't think right. I can't, no it wasn't max he was at uni by then but we had a um freddie and and the uh, they would we had to fly to somewhere in east anglia i oh, know stansted from from a blah, 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 somewhere in holland and do and do a gig and they were and he was green freddie i tell you he was absolutely <laughs> i remember thinking that'll learn you <laughs> <laughs> you know that'll learn you know if you're gonna do it if you're gonna do it and overdo it you just got you just, i love what lemmy said he said rock, rock and roll is when you're too is when you're too hung over to lie down stand up sit down speak think eat <laughs> um and then you can but you can still get up and do the gig he said that's rock and roll yeah anyway where are we where um, are we up to now? i was just going to uh, mention your because uh, I mean, you're in the same position as me you've got three grown-up kids and they're all exceptional musicians well they're all musicians i think fred is exceptional max isn't interested anymore He's a philosopher and he hasn't played drums in a couple of years, but he's a great player. But my, my May is, yeah, my, my, my May, I mean, she'll hate me for saying this, but I do it all the time. May, May, my May, 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 she should have been a drummer and a songwriter because she's a fantastic drummer. But she doesn't want to know. She's got better time. She's got better time than me, probably. And and she's also got incredible talent on the incredible talent on drums. And when she sings and she's really good, or, you know, she, if she ever hears this, she'll hate me. But um, and she writes, you know, she she writes songs and she sings and she plays guitar. Good. She's got quite an original take on it. But I always thought she should have been a drummer because she's actually such a she's a she's not a hooligan, but she's got a fierce temper. Right. And you know, <laughs> I think it's good. You know, if you're going to be a drummer, it's not bad to have a fierce temper. Cause you're whack shit out of the drums yeah. whack, sorry you can just whack the drums senseless well i i saw something that you did in lockdown you and may and i don't know who the other guy was but... oh and andre her boyfriend oh, you that... know what we talk about working on him he, he said to me when we decided we were going to do this gig he said john i've never ever played a song from start to finish <laughs> So we had to really work on him, but he did great the first time. The second one was a bit weird, but we did the bit, well. We did the Bill Withers tribute, didn't we? Yeah. Well, it was it was it for uh, um, uh, well, it was some sort of charity thing was you doing it for? Of course. Yeah. Of course, you know. There's no. I mean, I'm. Hey, I'm all. You know. It sounds. I'm all right for my. You know. I'm. I'm okay. You know. I'm. I can. I'm, I can take the hit of all this in, in, in on a lot of levels. You know. I'm old. I'm older, so I'm more. You know, I don't want to do the things that, that I used to do, if you like. And I can say, that, so, yeah, I want to do what I can to help people, you know. Yeah. I mean, I should do more, you know. I'm, I mean, I'm when I watch what people are doing, who've got much less than me, you know, it's quite humbling, you know, and it makes you feel bad that you didn't do any more. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, completely enough to change the subject. What? All right. Hold on. Do you want to hear that song in French? Yeah, go on, yeah. Come with it. The place to miss you, Lord. I've got some fish in my door. Toujours en vacances de la comtesse. La paix, c'est cool et chic. C'est toujours magnifique. Je vous applique sur la comtesse. La comtesse, mon. Anyway, that's in French. God. Did you just play that? Uh, did you, what? Did you just play that on the guitar or did you play it on something? On the guitar? Well, couldn't you hear it then? No, I could, yeah, but I, I, I wasn't sure whether it was on a CD. <laughs> no, 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 it's on a Brunswick parlor guitar, which I love. I love parlor guitars. Right. I love the toppiness of them. Talking of your guitar, your bass, I, oh, yeah. I don't know if I asked you this yesterday, but it is... No. It's almost as famous as you, that bass. It's... Uh, for anybody that's not seen it, it's got a it's got a rhino horn in the uh, in the neck and that lights up when you turn it on. Did you design that yourself? Yep. It's oh, it's pure spinal. Hey, well, I mean, spinal tap designed everything really. <laughs> uh, funny, funny enough, um, a, a friend of mine plays in Muse, and he's got lots of those. He's got lots of statuses with lights in, and I like I like to think I was in. in instrumental no pun intended of course in him using status basis he, chris from muse he's a pretty big quo fan you know well a lot of their stuff is very quo-esque isn't it really the... well it's riffy yeah 
You know, I mean, the, 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 I mean, I remember they came to see us in Newport years and years when they were quite small. But Chris, oh, oh yeah, I mean, he, he's a nice guy, Chris. He's a real, he's very down to earth. You know, that's, that's my, my, my kind. You know, also doing doing this mega sort, you know, doing this mega kind of stuff. But he's very, yeah, very down to earth. And um, oh, God, we could talk for hours. I won't. I, I, I know I've got a great story about him, but I won't. In fact, I'm going to tell you that he told me because. Andrew's son worked for Muse's record company when they were Mushroom Records, I think, or, or they were at university together. It was at university with Matt Bellamy. Anyway, they all came to soundcheck, and Rick wanted to hear his guitar, and they said, oh, this guy, Chris, he can play guitar. And um, as Rick said, all right, do you want to play the soundcheck? He said, all right, and, you know, and, and um, he, um, he, we played Don't Waste My Time. And I just, I went over to Chris and said, you know, you know about the funny bit, don't you, with the C sharp and the D, and he just looked at me like I was mad. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so he played it, and and uh, I, I I saw him. We, we sort of met up and went went out for dinner a few years later. And he was telling me about it. He said, "I ran a mile to a phone box to talk, to phone my mum afterwards." He said, "I could not believe it." He said, that "My legs were my legs were shaking, but I didn't tell anyone." I thought you were, I thought you were a bit fucking cool, aren't you? <laughs> but, um, I saw you're a bit you're a bit cool, aren't you? But yeah, and uh, yeah, he said, he said he, you, you won't believe what's happened. You won't believe it because. His dad walked out when he was young, and basically just left a stereo and a pile of Crow albums. So that's you know. So he became a mad Crow fan. I went to his wedding, and his mum and, he, and I met his mum, and she said, "I can't." She said, "I don't care about the wedding now." She said, "I've met Rhino." <laughs> <laughs> Better talk about Super Smashing Great because it's. Uh, I told you the other day that it's. It's one of the only songs this year that um, has had a, such a reaction from from my audience, that, and it's it, it's such a it's such a really clever song. Tell us about it. Well, I just feel, uh, I just feel that um, I, I, I'm not. And it's, it's not a political statement, really. I mean, I'm, I'm um, I understand that you know the, the entertainment and the arts are okay. I'm going to get a bit not. Not on my soapbox, but let's, let's face it, you know, to be honest, under under successive Tory particularly governments, you know, the arts have been basically, you know, there's, there's erosion going on. I mean, my 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 friend, Ronnie, Jeff Rich, was telling me this, um, he said, you know, you, you, you can't, it's, it's so hard, not hard, but there's less and less schools that want him there, you know, because basically a lot of schools are having to make the decision with cuts, whether they have music or not on the curriculum. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a toss up between music and something else. It's really difficult. Um, and, and funnily enough, he said to me, Rhino, we are breeding a nation of zombies. You know, I mean, everyone's looking at the screen, which is a completely, by, by, you know, different thing, but it's not really. It's it's how we are. But anyway, I just, you know, as I said, I think the, 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 the value, which to me is a completely wrong headed kind of thing, is um, the value of, of arts. Arts, for, like art, arts and music, museums, everything, you know, all, all that kind of thing where, where we are, uh, where you fill your head in other ways, apart from the daily grind. I think they, they've just basically become disinvested in, if you like. And um, I'm, I'm not making a very good fist of this, but... No, no it's absolutely fine, because exactly the same thing happened in Wrexham, and only yesterday, some of it popped up on my... Uh, on my Facebook page, from how how brilliant the orchestra and choir in Wrexham used to be, and then the the, the cuts just they, they've gone. They, they, they don't oh really yeah, exist. this is this is the trouble, you know. And I, and I mean, I, I'm not a particularly classical. I, okay, here it's a great song. I love the BBC. I don't care what anyone says about how bloated it is. I don't agree. I don't personally agree that it has a left, a left leaning. But you know, the right would say that, wouldn't they? You know, they would say it's left leaning because it's not firmly on their side. I think I like to think they became completely neutral. I am thrilled that my license fee uh, pays for. 35,000 people to listen to Radio 3. I'm thrilled that 150,000 people watch the sky at night. For me, my money is so well spent. Yeah. Um, I'm a passionate, passionate supporter of the BBC. And, I, you know, and all the Daily Mail readers that want to get rid of it can all... Again, <laughs> I refer to my previous statement about a word that rhymes with a duck. <laughs> Off. 
Um, mm. Yeah, to me, that's it's so important. But anyway, um, I appreciate that we're not high up the pecking order with the government, but they don't. They're not interested in my in my in my side of the um, of the entertainment arts business. You know, I'm sure they just. You know, as I said in my song, why give government money to a bunch of juggy yobs? Yeah, which they probably think we are. But I, I had a look at the figures. You know, live music, and I've bring in a lot of money. You know, and it's that's all. It is all vassable. Um, so basically, I just feel you know, we've been sold up, sold down, down the river. I mean, that, that's why I did the song. If you, if anyone wants to wants to have a look at it on YouTube, Rhinos Event Super Smashing Great. There's a donate button, and it's for it's for a um, basically for a road crew charity. And the guy I was I had a long chat with the guy that he said we're putting food on people's tables. You know, because I, I mean I know so many people. Who've been who've slipped through, who've, who were through the net? You know they, they've had nothing. They've had no, no um, nothing basically. Yeah. And and of course, and I know this is probably illegal or whatever. But you have there's a bit of the black economy in that you've got the stage crews now. They, they you know who are normally a bunch of reprobates, but they work their asses off and they get paid. You know, and I don't know if they get paid in cash. And that's not my not my side of it. But um, you know. They're getting nothing. I mean, well, out of the Quo crew now, uh, one is a caretaker. Uh, one one is working on a building site. One's uh, the, the three I know of. One's driving a, a, um, a Sainsbury's van, which is great because it's resourceful. Um, but there's no. I don't really think that there's any any thought gone into the, the, the you know the the the, uh, the infrastructure of our business because it brings in a load of money, and when and when it doesn't come back, they're going to go oh. Where's the money? Yeah, yeah. You know, am I making much sense here? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you, cer- you certainly are. And uh, you, you said it wasn't a, a political statement, but lyrically, it's quite a humorous dig at the government's handling of the pandemic, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's more about the music business, you know. But and uh, you know, and, and I was I've never voted Tory in my life, but I really did think that Boris might be a bit of a knight in shining armour. You know, that he was actually going to come come across them, and for the first time in a long time. We had a leader, you know, and Tony Blair wasn't, uh, you know, again, uh, Tony Blair was a leader, whether you like him or not. Yeah. You know, and I thought Boris was going to be a leader. And uh, I, I read, a gr- I, I read, I watched, listen, no, I read, what? I listened to a great podcast with Jeremy Paxman, who's an incredibly interesting guy, by the way. Um, and he said, ah, oh, Boris Johnson, yes, a leader for easier times. <laughs> and he is not wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I I think he's a bit of a coward, to be honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and somebody said to me today, that's the only good thing about Dominic Cummings. Dominic Cummings would make decisions, <laughs> obviously for him, yeah. but um, he would make a decision about stuff. I mean, you know, Boris, I think, is a bit of a headless chicken now. And it's a real shame, like I said, you know, because it, 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 but you've got to walk it like you talk it, and unfortunately, I don't think he has. No. So, um... Yeah. No, I, I love one of my lines because, but one of the lines that makes me laugh even now, which is my, uh, it goes super smashing green, super smashing green. My answer to your question, Laura, yeah. is super smashing green because you're like, <laughs> oh, Laura, that's a very interesting question, you know. Yeah. That's all you know, Laura Kosenberg. Yeah. So, uh, yes, who I used to hate, but now I really like because she's 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 not so sneery as she used to be. Anyway, um, buy it. Buy it, download it, it'll only cost a pound, or donate to the charity, please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. In fact, I must tell the kids that are listening, that if your parents don't make a sizable donation to this, they don't love you. <laughs> sorry, sorry to, you know, sorry to break, break the news, but you know, that's how it is, folks. Uh, before you go... I mean, Christmas is going to, it's going to be very different, but uh, how does it usually play out in a, an Edwards household? Is it? As, a, are you quite traditional? Do you do the same thing every year? No, nah, about humbug. I don't, I don't want to do anything about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, I'm looking at our Christmas tree at the minute. Um, yeah, we're having, we're having Christmas early this year because um, of oh, different oh, just stuff going on. We're gonna, we've got Christmas on Christmas Eve this year. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, I... It's what? What can I say? It's the weirdest Christmas ever. Yeah. But then, and I and I, I get these people that say it's only one day, whatever. But then again, I've not, I haven't been living on my own for nine months and been looking forward to seeing my family. You know, so it's 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 easy to be mealy. It's easy, easy to be mealy mouthed about it and say, oh, "What are you on about? It's only one day." But I really genuinely 
feel for the people that are struggling with this and uh, can't, you know, and it's been cruelly taken away from them. But that's how it, unfortunately, it's just, it is the way it is. Um, I mean, you know, we've, we've got to, we've got to protect the vulnerable. Do you know what 21, 2021, by the way? Go on. You know what it's going to be, don't you? Go on. Super Smashing Great, Super Smashing Great, 2021 will be Super Smashing Great, at long last we'll have some sense to celebrate, 2021 is Super Smashing Great, oh, sorry, anyway. John, it's been an absolute treat to speak to you, mate. You've been so generous. Thank you ever so much for that. I really appreciate it. That's all right. I'll bugger off. All right, pal. You take care. Cheers. Have a happy Christmas. Cheers. Bye. Ta-da, mate. The fun prevention officer lives at 10 Downing Street. John Rhino Edwards with Rhino's Revenge. John Rhino Edwards, of course, from uh, Status Quo, put out that track. Super smashing, great to help the stagehands uh, during COVID-19 and all that messing about. If you would like to try and donate, if you would like to donate, if you would like to uh, download that track, go to rhinosrevenge.com. Voilà, c'est comme ça depuis 10 ans ce matin. 